composting process. You know, we get enormous amounts of heat come out of this stuff. And we can get temperatures up to 80 degrees. In fact, you can cook potatoes if you don't mind waiting 24 hours. Um, you know, they will, they will bake in the compost heap. Again, everybody has done anything with compost and says, well, you can't, you can't, look at that hot, it's going to die. You know, 80 degrees, you're going to kill everything. Well, it doesn't seem to, it kind of cools down a bit, but it stays hot for weeks and weeks and weeks. So the potential for heat um, recovery is quite high. So we were hoping to try and get a trial for this. It didn't work out, but in the meantime, what, we, what I did do was, and this was 2002 when we last had a really cold winter. Remember it snowed and the country stopped for about a week? Um, well, at that time, it was December, I put a little cloche on top of the compost heap, sewed a few things in the tray, and see what happens. Um, the thermometer, which you can see, was recording nighttime temperatures of uh, about 8 or 9 degrees and daytime of 24. It was minus 10 outside. So, you know, there's clearly heat there. You can use this heat. And other people, Fred's here today from Dutch, he's been doing work on this um, by actually you know, using wood chip compost to raise all your trash plants. It's brilliant. At the end of the day, you get nice compost and you can raise plants at the same time. And the temperature is quite relatively easy to maintain. So it's a useful, possible, further project. Next one. I kind of lost a slice somewhere. Um, the, the outcome of the, the trials we did into the compost were pretty inconclusive, actually. There was really almost no difference between any of them. The only one which looked slightly not quite as good was the classroom with biochar, uh, because the leaks from that um, part of the trial actually had um, some rust, which wasn't present on any other. So um, biochar may not be the answer to disease problems. But the trial was really useful because it showed that the stuff we make from wood chip, which is something anybody could do really, it's not difficult, um, is perfectly acceptable. It grows a good crop uh, right the way through from seed to, to harvest. And there's no reason to be dependent on peat compost. Right, manual chip wood. Uh, this is a, a pretty much a new word in our language. Um, I heard it sort of 20 years ago, but didn't really take any notice because I didn't really know what it was about, uh, and I wasn't that bothered. Um, Ramble chip wood is any small branch wood, or any small tree, usually below about 70 millimetre. As trees get bigger, the centre of the tree starts to die, and there's, there's no active um, bacteria or fauna or nutrients in that part of the tree. So you need to use a younger part of the tree, which is higher in, in, in sugars and proteins and nutrients. It's um, chipped up, smaller the better. Uh, we go for minimum, well maximum, no more than 20%. Oh, I don't have time left over, I'm going to slow down a bit. Um, <clears throat> we go for, because we're we receiving this product mostly from a local supplier, we get a lot of cupressus leylanda, you know the thing I mean? You know, people move into a house and they plant a hedge around their little garden and it's only about a foot high. And then 10 years later, it's 30 foot high, and the neighbours are giving them a stick over this because like, it's dark in the house, and all the stuff's falling in their garden, killing their dogs and <laughs> destroying their wildlife. So they get rid of them, and they end up on our compost heap, which is okay, because it does compost quite well with other materials, but on its own, it's a nightmare. You cannot compost. So the wood chip is primarily from deciduous trees. It could be a whole range of different trees, and we get quite a lot of ornamentals. We also get things like oak and ash, uh, increasingly more ash because of dieback, uh, but also occasionally we do get conifers, which is okay up to a point, but we do limit it. It's applied to the soil surface, so this is material which is spread direct on the soil. And this is done really during the winter, which is the very time I just told you you should never put anything on the ground because you're going to lose all the nutrients. The thing about wood chip is there is no volatile nutrient, it's fixed, it's in the wood, it's in the carbon. So the, the possibility of pollution or loss of nutrients is very low. Winter's the time to be doing granular chip wood because you don't actually want the leaves. Granular chip wood works better without the green component. So you do it in the winter. It suits farm candles. There's always spare time in the winter. And we've done, uh, we've done hedge coppicing in order to maintain product and also coppicing. It's particularly good for minimum or no till. It has to be worked within a rotation. You can't just apply this stuff as and when you feel like it. You need to plan and, and, and <clears throat> design a rotation to allow its use because 
you don't want to be ploughing this stuff in because you will end up with carbon nitrogen problems. If you plough in wood chip into soil, even fresh wood chip, you will end up with locking up carbon for a year or two. I had a really bad experience when I was first starting out in horticulture with wood, wood shavings. Don't use wood shavings anywhere, ever. It's, it's a nightmare. Uh, with strawberries, we locked up carbon for like five years. Um, and it was a disaster, which, I, which is why I've always been slightly wearing wood chip. So don't confuse this material with, 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 um, uh, with processed timber waste, which will be from seeds and trees. It's a different product. <coughs> it's an excellent source of carbon, of course. It's, it's wood. And what else? It's the best way of... If you want to increase your carbon content, trees are the best way. Straw's okay, but trees is much better. Improved soil fauna. Because you, you are encouraging a range of bacteria and fungi, but as part of that, you need the rotation to go with it. You need diverse cropping. You can't just do this on, well, you can. You can do it on one crop, but you won't get the full benefit unless you, you apply this systems approach to horticulture, to growing. You need to have a good rotation. You need to be building soil fertility in other ways as well. This is not something you can do as a way of improving soil only. It's part of the system, and this is the important thing about it. On its own, it's not very good. On its own, you won't get the results. But if you combine this with rotation, good soil management, diverse range of cropping, and by diversity in all its various forms, it works really well. And it improves nutrients. Not so much because it brings its own nutrients in. It does bring some, but it's not a huge amount. But it improves plants' ability to find nutrients. It improves the mycorrhiza levels, which means that plants can then forage with phosphate. It improves the way that plants can find the minerals they need. The best way to to feed a plant is not to feed it. The best way to feed a plant is to feed the soil. This is old mantra, I know, but you know, occasionally, um, occasionally we need to remind ourselves about this because even now I still find growers who want to feed a plant something. No, you don't do that. You feed the soil, the plant will find what it needs. A plant, you, cannot, you are not more clever than a plant. A plant knows what it wants. You cannot make up a plant's mind for itself about how it should eat today. You have to let that plant find its own food and the only way you can do that is by providing the, the flora and the fauna and the soil for that to happen. Okay? Five minutes. Can you go back a minute? I forgot what that picture was. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the same picture. This is the, comp this is the compost feed. It's not actual brand of chip wood. I'm going to show you brand of chip wood in a minute. Okay, next one. Right, so where are you going to get all this magical stuff from? If you don't have a nice friendly tree search to bring you around with a chip wood every three or four days, you're going to have to think out of the box. So we have started to think out of the box um, as to what would happen if my tree surgery man suddenly stopped, suddenly found somebody who paid him for it. Um, then we'd have to think again. And we're looking at the farm in terms of how much of our farm would we need to set aside. Remember that? We used to get paid for doing nothing. Farmers just get paid to do nothing. Why didn't they get paid to plant trees? It would have been much more productive. So the figures I've come up with are kind of a bit back of a fag packet. And I don't really know, you know how true this figure is. It's just really to get you thinking as much as anything. Um, but from our coppice area, we have a, an area of 0.2 of a hectare, willow coppice, which I planted um, some while ago, uh, 16 years ago, it's been incredibly productive. It keeps getting even more productive. It was planted on a piece of land that was too wet to crop. Um, I spent years being arrogant, thinking I could continue to crop this piece of land. And one year we got two tractors stuck. I said, that's it, I give it up. It's clearly not meant to happen. So it went into trees. Um, if you want to grow willow, it's dead easy. You just go to the nearest river, find a tree, cut some pieces off and stick them in. You can even put them in upside down. They still work. You know, this, is, this has got to be the easiest crop. You know, if I, if I didn't have to make a living out of vegetables, I'd just grow trees. It's a whole lot easier, um, and in many ways, it looks a whole lot nicer. So the area I've calculated, if our coppice continues to produce as it does, and in fact the yield is going up each year, is we're looking at around 20% of our farm. So, you know, it's not a huge area. Um, you know, this is doable. If we were looking at the country as a whole, if this applied to every farm in the, in the country, um, some already have quite large areas of woodland. Um, you know, we are 10% forested in the UK, or 
you know, we're only going to double it, okay, I know it's a lot, but, you know, if we double it, we can be pretty much self-sufficient in terms of nutrient carbon and, and farm in a completely different way. So what I'm thinking longer term is, you know, we need to have better ability within a farm to produce more of our own resources. Next one. So the actual random wood chip is done in the winter. We get a guy in for a couple of days. He, he comes and coppices um, the willow. We, we do one row every year. We have six rows. It's on a six row rotation. So it's six years old, but it goes through the chipper. Some of it is quite big. Some of the larger stuff is picked out for firewood because it's too big. Um, mostly the smaller stuff goes through. And it's blown straight into the back of the muck spreader, which has never spread muck for a long time. And it's applied to the land. Next one. So as part of, part of this, we, you know, we have a trial ongoing with Organic Research Centre, which is the uh, wonderful wood chip something something woofs. It's called woofs, I think. Uh, anybody here? Um, you know about woofs? Maybe not. Um, we've had a three-year. In fact, it's ongoing. There was a three-year trial initially. It's, it's carrying on. We're doing this trial on a lot of parts of the farm as well uh, to get some longer distance figures. It's the, the year before the trial starts. The land is in its last what, one minute, uh, last part of the rotation, uh, which is squash, and the same with a all species green manure. And then the following year, we start planting the random wood chip. Next one. Uh, this is a trial plot, quite boring. It's just a load of, load of clovers, and well, it's not actually, it's really interesting. There's about 25 species in there. That was under sown in the squash the year before. And the pot is laid out as follows. Next one. Um, if you can see it from there, we've got composted wood chip and ramial wood chip alternate and in, in 10 meter strips. It's running across the field, so next time we crop the field, we're going to crop it lengthways so we can pick up the plots and get some interesting data. Next one. Can you go back a minute? Yeah, okay, just remind myself what I'm doing. <coughs> go ahead. Um, yeah, biomass and soil health test. Um, this, this takes a lot of effort. It's really done. If, if anyone's been to our land, you know that actually we don't have a lot of soils, most of stones. In fact, it's 40% of stone over 10 millimeter. It's terrible stuff to dig. Uh, if you're going to try and take soil samples, you know, you, you bring a pneumatic drill with you. Um, you know, it's chalky, it's stony, it's not very nice. It's quite a lot of effort goes into digging this stuff up, looking for soil analysis and, and earthworm counts. Um, there's a, a range of tests being done, and it's been really interesting to see what comes out of our field. And you can read for yourself. Um, there's a whole lot of quadrants across. I nicked this slide from ORC, by the way. Thank you. Um, next one. Uh, the differences between the composted wood chip and the, and the random wood chip are, are almost zero. There is no statistical difference, to put it in scientific terms. Um, the difference is the composted wood chip, because it's composted, actually we're applying, we're using twice the amount of material. So in terms of the results we've had so far, this is early days, it rather looks as if there's no, there's no advantage in composting wood chip, you may as well just put it on direct. Next one. And the biomass cuts also show a similar trend, there's almost no difference between the composted wood chip and the random wood chip. Next one. Uh, the difference you do see on the ground, and, and this is a, a photograph which um, I think I'm going to take and get some credit here. Um, the Rambo wood chip grows vast amounts of mushrooms and toadstools, an incredible amount. I mean, absolutely covered it, really. and that tells you something about it. Next one. Um, yeah, so everything's decomposing. Next one. Worm cast. Um, I mean, this is what we end up with, a massive amount of worm cast. And the, the, the really interesting figure, which I, I really love, um, the last dig that was done uh, a few months ago looking at the counting earthworms, ORC count everything at our farm, biodiversity, flora, fauna, earthworm. The last earthworm count, I mean, I, I, I almost wet myself, it was so good. <laughs> I couldn't imagine such a yield of earthworms. Uh, the conservative estimate is more than 10 million per hectare. And this is conservative. Uh, that doesn't account for ones which you couldn't get. Uh, this is more than 1,000 per square metre. Uh, this is in land which has been heavily cropped, intensely cropped in horticulture for 33 years. This is land which has been regularly tilled, uh, has, gets regularly beaten around, 
uh, take enormous amount of crops off, and still we can show an incredible earthworm population. It's partly due to the wood chip, it's also partly due to the, the green manure, it's also partly due to the systems approach. Next one. Um, I'm going to miss this one out. Next one. Um, another way we use wood chip is for pathways, and it's primarily to keep the weeds down. It works really well. We've got no dig in tunnels. We've done no dig for quite some while in tunnels. And the wood chip, which the idea was we put it on the pathways, we let it break down, and then we take it off and put it on the beds. Well, we haven't had to do that because the worms are doing it first. The worms are taking the material from the pathways, putting it in the beds. So, again, it's all about earthworms. Next one. And uh, final picture, just to remind me, I'm at the end. Um, this is a, another example of wood. Um, uh, I, lo I love the picture. It's one of our neighbours took this picture. It's our, it's our bed shed, it's Lynn's bed shed, which we built during the winter. It's mostly made from local timber. Some of it <clears throat> we actually cut down ourselves and processed on, on site. So, you know, wood has so many potential uses. It's not just about fertility building. So, you know, go plant a tree. This is so important. Thank you.